So here's our next section, 5-8, graph and radical functions. Our objective, to graph square root and other radical functions. Um, we're going to start with the review from the previous lesson. So recall that to find the inverse, uh, we have two steps. We first had to switch x and y, and remember that f of x is just a fancy, a fancy name for y. f of x and y are pretty much uh, interchangeable. So we switch the places of x or y. So we have, instead of having f of x equals x squared, I'm going to put x equals f of x squared. And our second step was to solve for f of x. And again, I put it, remember that f of x and y are the same thing. They're interchangeable uh, letters. And if it really helps you, you can write this as follows. Oh, sorry. You could say uh, y squared instead of doing all this. It's just a fancy way to say a function in terms of x. Okay, so our next step is to solve for f of x or for y, depending on what you have. How do we solve for it? We notice that f of x is raised to the second power, and we remember that to cancel that second power, we had to take the square root so that this cancels out with this index. Because I did that, this canceled out, I have f of x, I just switched uh, the places, and remember every time you take the square root of something you have a positive answer and a negative answer. That f of x equals x squared and f of x equals square root of x are inverses. Uh, remember there should be a plus or a minus somewhere here. Oops, I need my handy dandy pencil. Okay, so now we know that these two guys are inverses because we found the inverses. So, because we came up with this, uh, so what happened with mathematicians is they came up with this function and they decided to study it so they knew what it looked like. So, uh, we know how we can graph it. And by graphing the parent function, so this is going to become our square root of pt, which is the uh, pf, sorry, the parent function. So we're going to try to uh, kind of try to recreate what mathematicians did back in the day. We're going to go ahead and graph it and see what it looks like. So let's see. What happens if I choose a negative? I would have for x equals negative 4, I would have that y equals square root of negative 4. But I know that that gives me an imaginary number, which I cannot graph. Because as far as you know, when you know that this is the same thing as 2i, positive or negative 2i, but we cannot graph 2i. So the domain of this function has to be greater than zero because you cannot have a negative square root. So now that we know that the 4 doesn't work and that no negatives would work, I have to start with the smallest non-negative number. And the reason I say non-negative is because zero is neither positive nor negative. So what happens when x equals zero, y equals square root of zero, which is just zero. So I'm ready to go ahead and plot my first point. Um, what's the next number that has a perfect square root? Because notice that I could do, I could easily do uh, two, but two doesn't have a perfect square root, so it's gonna get, uh, I'm gonna get some kind of weird irrational decimal. So I'm gonna move on and choose one. The square root of one so when x equals 1, y equals the square root of 1, which we know to be 1. So when x equals 1, y equals 1. Again, I told you that, uh, that I could potentially choose 2, uh, 
but then I'm going to get something funky uh, as an output. So what, what you have to ask yourself is, look at your domain here. Notice that you can extend this forever, all the way to infinity. If you choose 2, you don't know exactly what the square root of 2 is, but if you choose 3, you have the same problem. However, if you choose 4, if I let x equal 4, then y equals the square root of 4, which is just 2. So when x equals 4, y equals 2. And then you ask yourself, what's the next number here that I could uh, take the perfect square root out of? And the correct, uh, the correct answer is 9. Because you know that the square root of 9 is 3, and I'm going to skip the actual work for that. So this is what, oh, that's not too accurate. So I know now that my graph should look something like this. And I put the arrow because I know that this is going to continue forever. However, over here I have no arrow because I know that my domain cannot go to the negatives because of what I explained here. You cannot plot a positive or negative i. So this function needs to have a domain that's positive. So how would I write the domain of this function? Think about it. The domain are all the possible x choices that I can make. And the way I worked this out was I started off at 0, 0 because I could not have the square root of a negative. So my domain goes from 0 and I could choose any x that I want as long as it's positive. So it goes from 0 all the way to positive infinity. Let me do this better. And my range is going to be very similar. You have to ask yourself what was the lowest output that I obtained? And it was also 0 this is a restriction of your uh, range. The lowest possible y value you chose, well, you didn't choose it, that you obtained was 0. And the highest one you can get is all the way to infinity. Because x's go all the way to infinity, the range is always also going to go all the way to infinity. So this is how you graph the square root pairing function.